le paso la palabra a CFAM. Thank you, Chair, and also thank you to Ambassador Corosi for earlier uh, committing to open dialogue with civil, civil society. The UN should always be for more debate. Um, we appreciate the many delegations who took a stand for life and the family in the 77th session, including by putting controversial language to a vote and faithfully representing the views of their people rather than go along with a fake consensus. UN policy should be truly representative and should not seek to usurp democratic debate on controversial issues. It has been our experience that member states are always open to partnering with civil society and receptive to our assistance. We are not among those who believe civil society needs more official or formalized channels for, for participation. Rather, we are more worried that when formalized processes uh, for civil society participation can be used to silence certain viewpoints and emphasize others, too often from the more powerful and wealthy stakeholders in the UN system. Um, as Ambassador Kurosi and others here who have experienced repressive rule under the Soviet Union can appreciate, there is a real danger of totalitarian tendencies, including to silence opponents on the pretextual grounds that they are dangerous, terrorists, anti-rights. This is not speculation. It is already happening now. Earlier this year, we, re we presented a letter to the CSW Bureau from over 600 organizations who work to promote the protection of life and family internationally. The NGO Committee on the Status of Women, a surrogate of CSW, for the Secretariat of CSW with deep ties to UN Women, is blocking non-governmental organizations that do not subscribe to progressive Western views about the family and women's issues from participating in the NGO CSW Forum, including many organizations with ECOSOC status, on the basis that they do, they do not align with their values. These actions are not dictated by safety concerns or authentic human rights. The same organizations that are now being blocked successfully hosted dozens of events through NGO CSW in past years. Rather, these are attempts to ban the participation of anyone who does not agree with the LGBT agenda or modern Western feminist ideology. This excludes billions of people around the world from UN debates. In recent years, organizations who partner with and are funded by governments, including the European Union and powerful foundations, called on member states to expel pro-family organizations who are labeled anti-rights from UN debates and stripping them of ECOSOC status. Government involvement in such calls creates the impression that these are acts are a form of reprisal for attempts to promote family rights. CSO, uh, participation in these acts should itself be scrutinized as a violation of ECOSOC's rules for CSO participation. This is completely unacceptable. It is a troubling development in a break with the UN tradition of openness to a wide range and sometimes eclectic diversity of views. We should expect many disagreements on a range of subjects at the United Nations and we expect um, and welcome when members of civil society express, express themselves with candor. We hope that the Third Committee and UNGA will honor this tradition of open debate and steer clear from discrimination against pro-life and pro-family groups. Thank you. Muchas gracias.